Did you ever hear someone quote a book and think, I've read that and remember nothing? That was me with Atomic Habits. My notes, if I can call them that, were not helped me improve on anything. I was reading Atomic Habits. You've probably heard of this one. I kept highlighting, thinking those passages would stick, but the highlights were trapped in my Kobo somewhere. And every time someone quotes the book, I catch myself thinking, how come I don't remember that? Here's another story. I binged those productive and note-taking videos and try to mimic them. Every single time the setup becomes a work. I, it gets convoluted, doesn't match what, how I think, and I ended up stuck wondering where each note would leave or how should I tag those and so on. So I was feeling restless, always thinking I should go back and build something that actually works for me on a daily basis, and I was annoyed at myself. I took time to highlight and say things and I wanted to use later, but I couldn't find them or put them in practice. So I decided once again to investigate. Two books actually helped. How to Take Smart Notes was the spark. It showed me that there's a different way, but it didn't click for me too much because it felt too abstract uh, and more at researchers and with heavy concepts. It taught me though, why note-taking matters, but I needed something hands-on. After some more Googling, I found a system for writing. And this one clicked with me because it had examples I could copy and learn faster with demos than with just pure theory. My video is about the takeaways I took from this book. Both books speak of a method called Zettelkasten, which you find many other videos explaining what it is. In a very, very short overview, the Zettelkasten method proposes that we take three different types of notes, fleeting, reference, and permanent notes. My setup is Zettelkasten-ish, but pragmatic. I have fleeting, reference, and main notes. The suggested change comes from a system for writing. And it's semantic in the sense that many notes will be permanent, but your main notes will have a different purpose. So what are those types of notes? Fleeting notes are for quick captures and to be reviewed soon. You can add more details and promote them to be other types of notes or just delete them. Uh, reference are highlights or observations and facts with a given source. Uh, all notes in this category should have a source, a book, a video, an article, and so on. Main notes are for conclusions that may and many times will link back to references or any other thoughts that are worth preserving, that may have or may not have a reference. So I like this already. Three folders, three types of notes, not a big decision space for analysis paralysis. Need a new note? The default is to fleeting note, it's to the fleeting notes folder. Watching a YouTube video and found something interesting? Create a note in the reference folder. Add a source link to the video and write whatever is in my mind. Found a tweet or a new development tool that caught my eye, but I don't have the time to write it or to test it out right now. Add it to my references with a link to the source. So both books overlap in how they explain these three types of notes. The main difference is that a system for writing has several practical examples. For instance, one concept that was a little bit difficult to understand, at least for me, was what is the scope of a main note? Bob Dodo defines it this way. A main note works best when the thought contained inside has been pared down to its essentials. Having a single idea to contend with means you won't be sifting through counterarguments and varying points of view. Instead, you'll be dealing with a single unit of information that freely associates with others. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Big words there, that sounds very important, but what does it mean? Luckily, in the same paragraph, he continues with, in all examples in this book, the single idea of the note can be found toward the top, just below the title. And what is great about this is that the book is filled with many of these cards with note examples. So I can look at those as a baseline. Again, as I said, I personally learn best with examples and the book is filled with note examples. Now, if the main notes should contain a single idea, how does one approach writing more complex notes? The main idea is through connections and Bob Dodo says it this way. When you make connections, you're expanding your ability to conceptualize and express complex thoughts. And once again, the book is plentiful of examples. 
but the two main concepts that quickly resonate with me are the concepts of previous and C. When you are writing a note that connects to another main note you've written, you can add the word previous and add the link to that note. For instance, I wrote this note. Being curious about why people decided to sign up to a list, waiting list newsletter and asking them that question is a good way to learn what am I doing right. You can pause, read again, but I want to bring your attention to the fact that there is a previous with a link to another note I wrote. One note could be connected to zero, one or more previously created notes, and by seeing their titles, I know why they were connected. The other type of connection there is, is C. And in the same note, we can see an example of this connection. C types of connections are used to link to reference notes and they work best when they add a short description of why the connection was made, just because a reference note might have more than one single observation in it. Which brings me to the third and final lesson I want to share from this book. References are meant to be returned to. And to circle back to my first story about the Atomic Habits book, this is what it's making the difference to retain information. Bob Dodo puts it this way. The most important thing about any form of reference note making is to, at some point, return to the note. And this, for other note takers, might be obvious, but it took me some time to accept the fact that I work best if I don't try to hold everything in my memory. Shocking, I know. You see, now on top of taking reference notes of everything I find relevant in a single place, I make the effort of having at least one main note connecting to them. And if I think that the reference doesn't need a connection, I just mark the note as processed. Here's the loop that actually works for me. I capture daily, either through just creating new notes when using my computer or on my phone. I have a couple of shortcuts that will capture text or a voice recording. All of that becoming fleeting notes. Then I process those two or three times a week, promote useful fleeting, clean up references, write main notes, and so on. Every time a main note gets created, either on its own because a fleeting note was promoted or because I reviewed reference notes, I always look for ways to make connections to other notes. The last part has become an interesting part of my system. I have created an easy way to identify which reference notes do not have been referenced yet. For me, because I'm using Obsidian as my tool for note taking, I can create a base that looks for every note that has no backlinks to it. Then I can review those and decide if I want to work on it at that moment or even mark that note as processed without having a backlink, which also means the note will not show up on that list anymore. That's intentional and, and some reference notes are just to be there in case I decided to search for them later. Before this, I was an intense consumer with no center. I had Kobo highlights, YouTube playlists, occasional podcast scribbles, uh, article bookmarks, and if it leaves everywhere, I reuse nothing. Now, every input lands as a reference in one place, Obsidian. Books export into references. I take notes while watching YouTube. Podcasts go through snip snippet and land as references, and articles go in via Obsidian Web Clipper extension. Now I know where everything lives. I revisit and connect, and I write, and I think about it. So I actually remember. I'm not architecting a system every month anymore. I'm producing. And I ship more because my notes already carry the sources with them, and the exercise of writing helps me remember more. My stack is actually pretty simple. And for today, this was not the focus of the video. I'm using Obsidian with three buckets, fleeting, references, and main. I have some other folders here and there, but 90% of my work are in these folders. Plus, I have my Obsidian bases that helps me find things. I have two iPhone shortcuts for capture, one for text and one for voice. Snipped for podcasts, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, it's simple enough and I stick with it. I can see this process evolving, but before it does, I'm trying to make sure that it evolves because I find I need for it to evolve. For instance, adding new folders, just in case that I really need those. I now treat my notes as a production system and my highlights will turn into output. 
this system may evolve, but for now, I feel like I am in a good place with it. Let me know, what is your system? What is your struggle with the information? Tell me in the comments. Thank you, and I see you in the next one.